Okay, first up is Gabriel. All right, there's a lot of really good stuff going on here. I think, uh, first of all, the rendering's pretty good. Um, you know, the look of the materials and the surfaces look nice. Um, I think the lighting is okay. It's a little hot on her and a little bit for, you know, I guess it depends what kind of lighting you're trying to do, but to have this kind of very sharp shadow for indoor lighting, um, it sort of doesn't, you know, it's like there's some giant light coming from this direction and hitting her. And when I think of typical indoor lighting, you know, kind of a gymnasium sort of atmosphere, it's going to be more kind of softer light with not such contrasty shadows. This is more like a bright sunlit day outdoors kind of lighting than a indoor kind of lighting. So just something that you could play with and tweak. I mean, everything comes up clear and it's good that you have cast shadows because it kind of places things on the ground and all that. Um, and the textures look pretty good. Um, as far as the animation, I think there's a lot of good stuff going on here. I think it's improved a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so some good attention to detail. I think um, areas where the animation could improve is a lot of it's with the timing. So. I think when you lift a heavy thing, you tend to go up a little quicker if you can. The other thing is I think you'll tend to have your arms, um, you know, a little straighter as you pull up because, um, it ta you know, take, to keep your arms bent like that just takes a lot more energy. Um, so I'd be, I'd be surprised if the, at least the arms were quite as, you know, almost full 90 degrees here. It was certainly possible, but I would tend to think they'd at least be straight a little bit longer and that you'd try to get up a little quicker. It feels a little bit like slow motion, a little bit like a little off balance, almost like she would fall forward. I think she'd try to kind of stick her butt out more to kind of counterbalance the weight of the of the barbell to stay balanced. Um, that setting it down looks pretty good. Yeah, see that one, that's interesting because this one um, in the second one, her arms do stay straight, um, whereas in the first one, they're like really bent at the beginning. So I kind of like the second lift feels, yeah, and, you, and also look you how the way you have her butt sticking out there, kind of counterbalancing it. So really, the second one is, is, to me, looks much more correct than that first one. Um, I guess she has that counterbalancing there to some extent. But at, by the time she gets here, it feels like she would fall forward. Um, and then the walking backwards, not necessarily an easy thing to do well, but it feels a little awkward somehow. And I think that part of it is that her stance is so wide, like the space between her legs is so wide, and I feel like it would be a little bit more aligned, like kind of, with the body rather than keeping the legs really spread apart. I think she would sort of more step directly behind herself rather than keeping the, the legs spread sort of with that kind of, you know, that really broad stance. That might make a difference. Um, I do really like that she puts her hand down to, to help her sit down. I think that's good. I think this kind of rotating, like twisting hand while she sits down looks, I think it'd be better if it, it just, it's stuck there. And I don't know if you have them in IK or FK at this point in time, but you'd probably want it in IK so that it sticks. And I think that drifting around is kind of weird. It'd be nice if it just stuck there. And I'm guessing that you have it in FK. I don't know, we can open the my file, but look. But the point is you should have it in IK at that point. And I like that kind of reaction to the mirror. I think that, again, there's some sort of extra floaty hand movements at the end. If the hand was just, just kind of came to a rest and stopped a little sooner rather than if the hand kind of after this thing, it sort of like meanders around and finds its place and kind of floats around. And also 
it sort of intersects the ball here. I think the fingers are are going through the ball. So again, if that hand's an IK, I think you'd be better off. She does that, the kind of waving at the mirror, she sets it down, it just sticks, it doesn't move. You know, and you can have movement on the body, and then I think that would be better. Yeah, that's a nice start to the walk there. So, yeah, I mean, loads of good stuff going on here, I think. Uh, but then there's, you know, as always, there's lots of things you could fix, too. And one rigging issue is I think that there's something funny. Part of it is actually the model of the hand and our forearm is just a little kind of weird, like where the wrist is and the thumb looks sort of short. And I don't know. And the, and the there's just something a little off with the length of the palm looks too long and the placement of the wrist joint, which is partially why when she waves at the at the mirror like that, that just looks kind of weird, that bend there, and I think it's because the sort of thumb looks really short, but the palm looks really long, and that bend looks a little bit too low, like like that, that the palm should maybe come down more to here, and it should kind of bend there, I'm thinking, but, you know, maybe a little late for that kind of tweak at this point, but... Um, Again, a lot of great stuff going on in here, so good work. Okay, this is Amber. Um, all right, so um, just talking about the uh, kind of the lighting and rendering first, I just think it's too dark. Um, it just makes it really hard to see the cam character and the action. I think, I mean, it's very moody, so that's interesting what you go have going on, but I think what you want to do, you can kind of maintain some of that and have the candles be the source of light, but still fill in the other areas with more light, sort of imagining that the candle light was sort of bouncing off the walls and filling the room with enough light to be able to see the character, because right now, she sort of falls into darkness a lot, and I think it's it's maybe um, a bit too contrasty, a bit too dark. Um, I think um, I think a lot of the animation points I brought up seems like some things have been improved, but other things could still be fixed. Um, I think you know, sort of smoothing out that walk so it doesn't feel like kind of feels like it's start and stoppy a little bit. Um, you've got that one hand grabbing on there, which is great. Um, but I would get the other hand involved too. Maybe she sets it on here. Um, I think you fixed some camera stuff. I think, uh, which is seems a little bit better. The thing too is like she takes all these little steps, and there's like extra steps here. So it's like she walks kind of straight up to here. And then she takes a couple extra little steps where it's like, so this foot lands, and then that one lands right next to it, and then this one lifts up, but comes down in about the same place, which looks a little funny. Um, and then, and then, while this one, this one should actually stick down here, but instead, while this one's up in the air, her left foot rotates while the other one's in the air, but it should be sticking. Um, and it's like, and this one's pivoting, and this one lifts up once, and then lifts up again, you know, and really it should be like every other foot. So I just think there's a lot, It's a, you've got a lot of extra little steps there, and it ends up looking kind of funny, like a little, so what I would do is, you know, maybe she, rather than walking straight up to the bed, when this foot lands, if she knows she's going to turn, instead of having it land straight facing the bed, maybe it should land at an angle to the bed already. So it, it like, let's say it lands something like in that sort of position on that first step. And then she can, then she's already, you've already, you just skip all those little steps that happen in between. And then she brings this one around, something like that, and sits down. So you've, you've cut out like many of those little steps because 
there's no reason for this foot to land straight facing the bed, and especially there's no reason for that foot to land there, right? You know, she should, she knows what she's doing. She knows she's going to sit down on the bed, so she should approach it in a way that makes her, and I actually, you know, I might, I think what's also making this hard is she's, I feel like she's spinning a little unnaturally, like she's doing like almost like a full 360 here where what I think would be the more natural t thing, you know, she's going to end up facing the foot of the bed like she does, you know, when she's laying down. So what I imagine her doing is rather than turning clockwise, I imagine her getting up to here and turning counterclockwise, so having this foot facing towards the end of the bed in her first step. And I think that'll, and then when she lays down, I think it'll all make it more natural than her doing what essentially is a full 360 to lay down sort of like, you know, like when dogs, it's a little bit like that when dogs are kind of like going in circles and kind of patting the area around to to, to lay down. Um, I do really like this pose. I like the back of her hand on her forehead, her hand resting on her stomach, the knee bent. This feels, whoops, very natural. Um, so that's, that's some nice work there. Um, but I think just the timing needs to, so I think something, I think you need to reduce the number of poses it takes to get from standing onto the bed by, you know, by going um, clockwise rather than, you know, by going counterclockwise rather than clockwise, you know, all 360. She can just do like a 180 turn and sit down rather than that full spin. But then also just the timing, like she's, she's in a restful mode. She's lying down and this, like if you look at how quickly that foot is moving up, you know, we're at like one, two, three, four, five frames. You know, it's just a fraction of a second. I feel like that would slow down a little bit. I think, and this is a little unnatural too, this way she lifts her whole butt, and I think I mentioned this in the last critique too, like that would take a lot of energy to raise yourself, whatever that would be, like six inches off the bed, That's so I think rather than raising up, she should just slide straight back um, there, and then she would still probably end up here, it's just you have to need to get rid of that vertical movement that she does, and again, and probably here, I suppose it's okay to do the two legs at a time, but I think one, you know, swinging around this leg and then that leg, uh, one after the other, would be a little bit better. Um, and then he, what's good about this is she does scoot along the bed, which is good. She's not trying to lift her butt up, which is good. And then laying down, I think, is good, but her, her spine is staying so straight, and you should try to curve the spine so it kind of like almost just sort of more rolls down onto that than kind of purely pivots from the hip, like this, there should be a, a, a curve to the spine there. Um, nice pose there, as I mentioned before. So, yeah, there's a lot of good work in here, and I think it, it actually would be worth putting more time into the animation to sort of improve it. I mean, frankly, if, if you just, you know, if just from here to there, you know, like, would be, has the potential to be a nice little piece if you just kind of worked on all those little things, just the laying down part alone. But again, it's all, it's all that attention to detail and stuff. So I think, yeah, generally you need to make it brighter. Um, uh, you mentioned problems with the uh, hardware render. Um, here's the hardware. And the, the, oh, it's not even advancing. It's just like a still, essentially. So I'm not, you know, not sure. But the, the whole point of doing the hardware render was just to, to speed things up so that you could, you know, you don't have to worry about render time. It just exports really quickly. But so you don't need to do a hardware render. It was just a way to have something, you know, done where you got the, a rough look at what the lighting looks like before you do the full on render. But since you render able to software render anyways, it's not that important. Okay, next up is Jessica. Right. Um, it's good that you've got, you know, more of the body moving around. Um, I think that, uh, oops, we've got to kind of pay attention to timing and, and balance too. So when you lift this foot up, your root has to adjust and shift over the foot that's carrying the weight. So this root control should be centered over the foot carrying the weight. Otherwise, he would fall kind of forward and down from being off balance. Um, but it's good that the feet are sticking on the ground more. And that looks a little bit more balanced because there's this lean this way to kind of counterbalance that leg, but I still think the, the root needs to be shifted over this leg more. 
um, and also you know the way the the body's twisting but like ahead of the root but the root should really more lead and again you, it feels a little off balance here with this kind of being left behind a bit um, it kind of catches up there which is better I think the feet still seem to be kind of sliding around if you look at the feet they're still kind of slipping around a bit where in most cases you're going to have one foot that's planted while the other one is moving uh, I mean certainly there are examples where both feet are moving at the same time but that's an exception normally you know like during this step you would plant this foot have it straight and stuck in one spot and then this one would be moving while that's planted and then when that's planted then this starts moving um, and so he is moving around more which is good but it's a little just I'm having trouble interpreting what that action means um, this pose looks a little bit better there's more of kind of a feeling of balance I noticed you know it looks like this foot is carrying more weight than that one this foot doesn't appear to be flat on the ground though so that's something you might want to fix um, and he's leaning down and picking that up that's good so yeah I mean it's it's definitely improved but I think it still has kind of a ways to go uh, but it feels like you're starting to get the hang of some of the stuff. Um, regarding some of your rendering issues, um, first thing I'm looking at your render settings. It looks like the renderable camera here is set to this stock character, yada 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 perspective, and um, which is this camera right here. So that means that if it rendered, it would just render this point of view. So it's very important, you know, that you have your camera in the right position and you have the right renderable camera selected here. Um, it's absolutely, well, it's probably the most important thing when rendering. Um, and actually it looks like there's two renderable cameras here, so you're going to want to, you know, chuck one of these uh, with a trash can and make sure you have the right one selected there. Um, make sure you have the full frame range, uh, name that number extension, you've got that, but make sure that this is the, the full frame range of the animation. And um, you mentioned mental ray so first thing to check is windows settings preferences plugin manager and you're looking for maya 2 mr make sure that is checked and in there where is it uh right here maya 2 mrmll loaded auto load so look for that if that's not there um you you might need to download and install the mental ray plugin so so I just googled um, Mental Ray for Maya 2015 and um, I think you can get it from here uh, and Mental Ray is that it? That might not be it. Let's see what they say here. I just gotta find the link. Yeah, okay. I think. Yeah, I mean, I think you can install that mental rate for my. I think. I, I don't think it's changed in Service Pack 4, so uh, make sure that's installed. So it's not. If it's not showing up in Plugin Manager, make sure to install it. Um, regarding some of the uh, animation issues, let's just hide the joints because they're distracting. So, you know, I was talking about here. Let's look at your keyframes. So. Like when he lifts this foot up, the root should shift over this foot. And see, does that look more natural to you when he does that? As he lifts the foot up, he shifts over. I just added that. The way you had it was this. So you had this. See how the root just stays perfectly still as he lifts the foot up. And all I did is on that keyframe, move this over here so it's centered over that foot. And so that as he lifts this other foot up, you know, and then again, it still needs to be over. And probably even more, it almost has to be overshoot it to kind of counterbalance the weight here. So let's look at that. Let's see what that, like, it, doesn't that look more believable to you? It does to me. Um, yeah, and then, you know, sort of keeping it while that foot's there. And then, yeah, still, whoops, you know, while that foot's out. 
But then as he sets it down, you know, so here's what we have now. He leans out, you know, to counterbalance that foot. And I think this still needs to be a little more over. But then as he sets it down. And so then when you do set it down, you know, it like it goes right through the floor here, as you can see. Um, so that needs to be kind of fixed. So um, that's going to be translate Y is 0. And let's just zero out these row tapes to get that flat. And is your floor at 0, I wonder? Looks like it's up above a little bit, which might make things a little trickier. So the floor should be at 0, so that when the feet are at 0, they're not going through the floor. You also have this piece which is kind of above. I don't, do you need that? I might just hide that. Um, so now his foot looks more flat on the ground. With the ground at zero and the foot at zero, the foot's on the ground. But it's still... So now he sets it down the ground, but then it sort of goes through the ground. And So if you want to... I mean, what I might do is actually skip this pose and kind of you know, have the foot sort of land maybe there in preparation of the next step and maybe his root has to go down a little bit to accommodate that okay so when he sets it down he sets it down there but then it needs to stick see it's and it's sliding so I'm gonna select the foot middle mouse click here so I update the time without updating the position and hit S for that so now it's gonna stick between those two Maybe he's going a little bit too high here. Okay. And again, so one foot sticks while the other one moves, but you have both moving at the same time. So I'm going to again make this one stick. So the way I do it, select this, middle mouse click on this frame, hit S, and see now that one one's sticking. And for this, I think that actually that movement's okay, it's just that the body needs to kind of move with it, so. And again, this, this foot needs to still stick until the other one's set down. And then I think I need to fix the this foot placement because it's not, you know, clearly it's not flat on the ground, so let's, let's just start by zeroing out those rotates zero out the translate Y to get it flat on the ground and then rotate it into position and then it's you know flat. It's a little bit awkward where that foot's landing. Maybe more like here or something. Maybe the roots down. Still not great but so one foot sticking the other one moves. I might get rid of this middle keyframe here because it whoops on the foot. Okay, and then maybe just lift it up in the middle there. Okay, and then this foot needs to stick, so right, I select that middle mouse click here, S, and that foot's sticking. And then again, let's get this root lower so he's not... And again, again your foot's just going right through the floor, so let's zero that out, zero out the rotate so the rotate's not all crazy, but then get it into a more natural position. So it's still a little funny, but... Um, maybe this lifts up a little bit more in the middle here. And again, you have both feet moving at the same time. So I'm not going to reanimate, but let's just look at the beginning now and see if that looks any better to you. A little better. You know, it still needs work, but hopefully that's giving you some idea how you can improve it. Okay, next up is Eddie. Um, so yeah, you've got, you know, some, some more stuff going on, which is good. Um, there's, it looks like there's many, much too many keyframes on the hand here, the way it's kind of shaking around like that. Um, I like that he ends the pose looking up. Uh, if you watch the last video, I spent some time showing getting the feet to stick, and see how the feet are kind of just sort of slipping and sliding around here. 
So you're going to want to just move one foot at a time so it doesn't look like he's sliding. Um, so yeah, this you know definitely needs more work. It looks like you have some animated lights and also the ground animated, so you're probably going to want to take any keyframes off the lights or the surfaces because that's a little bit distracting. And maybe work on the camera angle, get something a little closer. Um, you got this render going, which is, is interesting, it's good. It's a bit busy, I would say, with all these kind of reflections and really bright areas and high contrast textures and stuff. So I would try to tone back some of the textures, you know, not have things quite so bright and quite so contrasting, quite so busy, because it, it sort of, the eye gets just, you know, you want the audience to really focus on the character and what the character is doing. And with these, like, you know, extremely, like the highest contrast point in the scene is right here, where you have this, like, sharp point and this, something nearly black and something, like, nearly 100% white. And you have, like, this very saturated colors here and these high color contrast between this sort of brown and this yellow and this very busy texture. So all of those things are, like, it's it's such a busy image that it's distracting from the character. So I think a lot of those things, you know, reduce the brightness, reduce the contrast, you know, really tone things back to to not have such a busy high contrast background image because it's distracting. Um, but the the render itself, the way you got the physical sun and sky to work, sun and sky to work is good. Um, but I mean, the animation has a really long way to go. I think I would have liked to see to see you much further along at this point in the class with the animation. And um, so, yeah, I would try to keep working on that and see if you can improve it. Um, and just get you know get a few more poses in there. Get the feet to stick. Make sure you're only moving one foot at a time. All that stuff. Next up is Jose. Okay, so it's um, good that you got beyond just those first couple poses. Um, I think the big thing to fix is the timing, because um, there's this long hold here where we're, you know, what are we at about, you know, we're almost a third of the way through your animation before he even starts to move. So I think, you know, you could hold it for a moment, but don't hold it for quite so long. And this standing up feels a bit slow, so I might speed that up a touch, but then these steps look Really, a little bit abrupt and fast, especially those couple at the end, I think, need to slow down where you've got <laughs> like this. It's like his, also you have both feet moving forward at the same time. Really make sure one foot is stuck while the other one's moving. I mean, I think this pose has some potential because I do like the way he's resting his hand on his knee to help push him up, but I think the timing of it's much too fast because you're going, you know, this is like one frame from here to here, and that should be like you know, like at least five frames or something, you know, to get from there to there. Um, and then that's pretty quick here. That's just, you know, three or four frames there. And I think that could be really slowed down to 15 frames or something, you know, just it really should be much slower. It's just, uh, that looks way too fast that, especially those last couple steps looks really rushed. So I think, you know, adjust the timing of that stop and there's some other stuff you can kind of clean up on that walk. And I don't know if it's intentional. It looks like he has a limp. Um, so if it is, then well done um, putting a limp in there. I think you can work on the camera. I mean, I, I don't think you need to be this wide and certainly I don't think you need to stay this wide so you might you might start with a somewhat wide shot but probably not this wide because it, you know if you look at the real estate on the screen you know we've got like easily you know and really if you just everything above his head that's almost half the screen where we have really nothing going on so I would really frame it in where you know like your wide shot is just including that and then punch into something more like this where we're really able to see the character more so that's filling up the screen so I feel like you're starting out too wide and you're staying too wide um, and so you could have one camera cut in there we get a little closer so yeah fixing the timing fixing the camera um, I think are the, the big things to improve uh, also, just getting some kind of colors and textures on there rather than using the default gray, I think would really help. The lighting is okay, you know, it's not bad. Um, but, uh, I mean, are we, is this just a play blast at this point? Or is this a render? It looks very aliased to be a, uh, a render. So, anyways, yeah, try to get it nicely rendered with some colors and textures.